and welcome to Just One More Watch. I have got two pieces of fantastic news for you all. The first of which, admittedly, you may already be aware of, and that is that Zelos have reduced the size of their watch boxes. They used to supply them in these chunky little wooden bricks, occupying approximately that much space in your watch storage facility. However, they have now moved to this much more svelte and compact design, occupying only this much space in your watch storage facility. And we know what that means, don't we? You can now hide even more watch boxes from your significant other in the same amount of cupboard space. And the second piece of good news is that Zelos tonight at 11 p.m. Singapore time launch a brand new range of titanium Makos. Now, I don't know what time that is for you because I don't know where you live, but I will leave a link to their website in the description of the video. I'm sure you can all work it out. I think the Mako range and the Swordfish range are my two favorites from Zelos. I think they're the two biggest sellers as well. Crack and value dive watches, they're great in stainless steel, they're even better in titanium titanium because they're even lighter. Now I reviewed the Swordfish Titanium last year. I thought it was fantastic for $400, indeed so fantastic that it made my top five bottom five list in the right end of the top five bottom list at the end of last year. This new Titanium Mako, I suspect, is odds on to make that top five list again. It is astounding how much value Zelos seem to pack into their watches for a very, very reasonable price tag. Now, these ones have not been in Sydney long. They only arrived this week, but I knew if I didn't get the video out today before their launch, then they would sell out before I had time to make it. They are that good. They sell out very, very quickly. Every range, every model, every single time. Why? Let's flip the camera and find out. My apologies, I got carried away with myself in the intro there making cheesy jokes about their new packaging. I forgot to play the siren. I'm sure you saw the pop up, but I always like to play the siren anyway. This video is sponsored by Zelos. It's not just gonna be a 10 minute love fest though, I promise. There will be some moans and niggles later on. There is no such thing as the perfect watch after all, but these are generally very, very good for the price you pay. Nice packaging as well for 450. I'll leave a link in the description, 450 for these standard colors, up to 470 for the mother of pearl. I've got two today, they sent me two. Uh, I think they're up to about $600 for the Damascus colors. There we go, nice. I do like this pouch, a definite upgrade over the old packaging. What I don't really like is a one year warranty though. We found the first moan and niggle later. Gorgeous looking watch though. This is the antique green. I've also got a blue mother of pearl. I actually got a little bit worried when Elshan said he was gonna send me the mother of pearl, but I needn't have bothered. There we go. It's kind of pearlescent. There is a mother of pearl effect in the middle, but it isn't nearly as noticeable as I was expecting. It's not that kind of creamy, milky white mother of pearl. I must say these watches have been a bit of a bugger to film. They're both spectacular in the right lights, both rather ordinary in the wrong lights, and quite a lot of flecto from both of them, as you'll see some of the outdoor shots, some of the macro shots that I introduced later on, but both very striking in their own ways. Both obviously identical in terms of the dimensions. The Mako is the slightly smaller of their range of dive watches, a little svelter as well, especially considering 300 meters. 40 mil in diameter, bang on 14 mil thick, 46 mil lug to lug, which sounds really compact. However, you can see here protruding mid links of the end link. So it wears a little bit bigger. If you have a very small wrist, it'll be great on a leather, but the bracelet wears a little larger than that 46 mil lug tip to lug tip suggests. 20 mil lug width. There's a bit of a taper here down to just under 18, back up to just over 20 at the clasp. The clasp is proportionally a little bit large. The weight though, that's the key dimension with this one, 124 grams. So for a 4020 stainless steel 300 meter diver, I would be expecting somewhere between 145 and 155 grams. This one coming in in the 120s, the mid 120s. Doesn't sound a lot, but I really appreciate the lack of weight you get from one of these titanium divers. Like I said, the Makos are good, the titanium Makos are even better. And very nicely finished too. Look how neat and tidy that bezel is, the machining on the bezel. Very sharp, very precise. So a mixture of brush and polish, vertical brush on this mid case, and we have a brushing on the upper lug surfaces, but there's a bit of chamfered high polish as well. So on the downturns heading towards the 
tips of the lugs and also on the upper edge of this crown guard. These Makos all have a kind of semi-guarded crown. You can see kind of guarded at the top, but not the bottom. And it's a four o'clock crown as well. So again, nice mixture of brush and polish there. And a Zelos branded crown that is loomed. You don't see loomed crowns very often. Loom has always been a bit of a party piece for Zelos and this one is no different. And the bracelet is excellent, very, very smooth, nice fine brushing to the uppers, and there is a high polished chamfered edge to both sides of the bracelet. Again, kind of matching up with those high polished chamfered edges on the case, and the high polished chamfered edges on the clasp as well. Screw links here, they're proper, separate three links. I had no problems adjusting this one. Small screws, I always have my heart in my mouth, but no problems at all getting those screws in and out to fit me, and it's a good clasp. Double security pusher, proper milled upper, milled lower, and as a bonus, it is adjustable. Pull that trigger and you've got about a centimeter of back and forth again. Specs you don't necessarily expect for a watch at this price. Now I'll unscrew one of those links to show you the case back. It is a screw down titanium case back as well with the Mako sharp etching. I know people complained about those being too sharp in previous models. This one has no such worries. Very, very faint etching. You wonder why they actually bothered. 300 meters, Zelos, Mako and titanium advert advertising the sapphire crystal and it is numbered so this is 101 out of 400 and behind that case back sits a Miota 9015. So the Miota 9015 is a high beat 24 joule hacking and hand winding auto made in Japan running at 28,800 vibrations per hour. So you do get that nice smooth high beat sweep with the second hand. It ticks effectively eight times per second as opposed to the six ticks you get from a Seiko 4R or even a Seiko 6R movement. The one quirk with this movement though is it only winds in one direction. So you do tend to get a bit more rotor wobble and spin than you would from the equivalent Eta, Salita, or even a sequel movement. Stated tolerances of these Miota 9000 series are minus 15 seconds per day variance up to plus 30 seconds per day unregulated. This one coming in plus 10 seconds per day, bang in the middle with a very healthy amplitude and minimal beat error. But what do you think of the looks? I know that some people find Zelos a bit too modern, a bit too in your face. I think the Mako, having said that, is the most discreet of all of their designs. This is my bronze Mako 2 on the left, and you can see they've kind of refined it, they've toned it down a little bit, they took away some of those extra indices. Now, this is a meteorite version. There are meteorite versions of this titanium Mako available, but I have that lovely kind of organic guilloche whirlpool green and the mother of pearl. So let's zoom in on them both. Let's have have a look at them under macro. So different dial materials these two but identical dial layouts. All indices are applied. You've got that big kind of segmented arrowhead up there at 12 and smaller arrowheads at the 3 and 9. Great decision I think putting the date complication down at 6. For me anyway that is by far the best place on a dial to put a date. I love the fact that they have colour matched these ones. Not just black or white but blue for the blue one and green for the green one. They've even put a little triangle underneath that date window so you're not missing out on any of the delicious loom. I will show you the loom later on. Circular indexes everywhere else. Now it's an embossed Zelos Z above the pinion and just 300 meters, 1000 feet in yellow on both of these models printed beneath the pinion and automatic. That's it. No other clutter on the dial there. There is a printed minute track around the outer edge, a kind of chapter ring there with numerals on the fives and dots on the others matching the dots on the bezel. Now both of these bezels are ceramic, kind of matte ceramic finish on both. There's a kind of circular brush to them as well. Again, plenty of loom there. Now it's a carryover handset from previous generations of Makos as well, kind of unique to this model. Big lollipop second hand with a kind of loomed lollipop tip and the hour hand and the minute hand are both beveled down the middle. I wonder if they couldn't be maybe 10% bigger each. They're nicely proportioned, they're nicely lengthy, but I wonder if maybe they couldn't be a little bit wider which would of course allow for the application of even more delicious loom. Let's have a look at the loom then and let's have a look at it at normal speed before I speed it up. 
C3 Superluminova is the vast majority of the loom here. That's the kind of green tone. All of those indexes, the hands and the bezel is all C3. But you will notice the second hand is actually in BGW9. So that's blue toned. And there's a chapter ring around the outer edge that I highlighted earlier on. That is also loomed in BGW9. Barely loomed in BGW9 though. It's kind of now you see it, now you don't. If I crank up the speed, the chapter ring vanishes pretty much straight away. Not quite sure why they bothered looming it if it's not going to be particularly powerful loom, but the hands, the indexes, and that bezel insert still glowing vibrantly to the end of the 20 minutes. It's one of these watches you know the loom is going to be good. It's kind of shouting at you, shouting at you in bright sunlight, never mind in low light transitions or even in complete darkness. And it wears really nicely as well, thanks to the fact that it is made of coated titanium, 125 grams, significantly noticeably lighter than it would have been in stainless steel. But as I said, 46 lug to lug, don't expect it to wear necessarily like a 46. It does have those protruding mid links of the end link. I guess that's because it has quick release end links there. A bit of a compromise, I guess. Maybe I would have preferred it to have inverted mid links. I think that would have helped for ladies or gentlemen with smaller wrists than I have, but it wears well, nice and flat, no protrusion from the case back. And yeah, you can notice the weight or lack thereof. And that's the overhead shot with the mother of pearl one. Legibility will vary depending on which of the dial combinations you go for. This one has silver hands, whereas the, the green, the vintage green, the antique green has gilt hands. But yeah, most of them are pretty legible, nicely proportioned as well. And let's have a quick look at each of them in natural light, starting with the blue mother of pearl one. Yeah, that's what that dial is all about. Tricky to capture, but when you get it at the right angle, it does look quite spectacular, but there is quite a lot of flecto coming off that double dome sapphire crystal, so beware of that. On rest, yeah, it wears pretty well, nice and light, relatively compact, 4020 is gonna suit the majority of people. And personally, I really appreciate a 4020 coming in at about this weight. The green one, I'm a fan of this organic guilloche whirlpool patterning as well. It does look like there are some inconsistencies across these dials though. It's an organic style of pattern, so don't expect uniformity, but I like the look overall, as long as you're prepared for the occasional little inconsistency. And on wrist, it wears exactly the same as the blue mother of pearl one does. Now, I did say this wasn't going to be a 10 minute love fest, and it pretty much has been a 10 minute love fest so far. So what am I going to complain about? What are my moans and niggles? Well, moan number one was the one year warranty. I say it every time, but it doesn't seem to make a blind bit of difference. Moan two... Flecto, Flecto, and more Flecto. I'll pop in some outdoor macro here that highlights the Flecto. Yeah, very, very noticeable. What they could have done with another couple of layers of anti-reflective undercoating on the double dome sapphire crystal, that would have meant that you got to see the lovely mother of pearl or will pull organic guilloche dial patterning even more than you already do. It's not off-putting, but it is something you are going to have to bear in mind, and it is quite prominent under certain certain light conditions under certain circumstances. Personally, I would have traded quick release spring bars in the end link of the bracelet for an inverted mid link of the end link of the bracelet. I mean, guys with big wrists aren't gonna be bothered either way, but I think it would have broadened the appeal of this one, especially as it's a 4020. It would have helped it wear better on people with smaller wrists. And the clasp now, it tapers down to 17 and a bit and then goes back up to over 20. It is slightly bulky, but I forgive it, I suppose, because it is, it has that built-in adjustment. Now, interesting that I got two different watches. It gives me a chance to compare these two different watches. And I must say, the crown action is much, much smoother on the green one than it is on the blue one. The blue one is a little bit tough and a little bit gritty to wind. Similarly, the bracelet quick release is much smoother on the green one as well. This one, ooh, a little bit, you can almost hear, you can almost hear the grit there. I'm sure that will loosen up with time, but yeah, inconsistencies across two watches of the same model from, I presume, similar batches. My last little niggle involves the bezel action. The bezel action itself is okay, 120 click, unidirectional, pretty much what you'd expect. 
Sounds quite brittle. Titanium, though, it always has a slightly different feel and a slightly different noise than you would expect from stainless steel. There is, however, just a little bit of bounce from both of them. So they're consistent in that respect. The class may be slightly different, but the bezel action is the same, but at least everything does line up nicely. Yeah, that's not a massive list of complaints though, is it? And most of them are fairly minor when you think about it. These Zelos are definitely a bit of a benchmark in the wonderful world of micro brand watches and easy to see why when you look at a model as strong as this. For $450, you get an original design, you get really interesting choice of dial finishes, full titanium case, bracelet, bracelet clasp, all coated to be scratch resistant. You get masses of loom, you get a well-integrated date complication with a color match date wheel, you get on the fly adjustment, sapphire crystal, etc., etc., and a high beat Japanese auto all for $450. The design may still be a little bit in your face for some, but as with all other Zelos models, I expect these ones to sell out within hours, if not within minutes. So there you have it, well done for making it to the end. If you're into Zelos, why not check out my review of the Titanium Swordfish last year on one of the unsung heroes from the range, the Horizons GMT. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all soon.